Hello everyone, let's look at the new features and chances that Microsoft is rolling out on Windows 11 build 26.220.7271 and the dev and beta channels. This preview introduces the presently revealed Xbox full screen experience, but this time it's going to be available for all PCs. The company is also rolling out the new point in time restore feature, and there's some tweaks to the context menu for File Explorer to make it a little bit less cluttered and more. Okay, first, Microsoft is actually now bringing the Xbox full screen experience to all regular computers. So this means that the feature is no longer exclusive to handheld devices. So, but what actually is the full screen experience? Well, it is a feature that transforms the traditional Windows 11 desktop into a controller friendly console like interface. The primary goal is to strip away the complexity and resources overhead of the extender desktop operating system, offering a streamlined and dedicated gaming environment. When you enable the experience, the device won't be loading the standard Windows Explorer shell and it will be suppressing unnecessary background processes. According to the company, this new experience will free up approximately 2 gigs of RAM. Now, once you install the latest preview of Windows 11 from the dev or beta channel, you can just go to the settings app and then from the gaming section, you will find the entry for the full screen experience page. And from here, you just need to select the Xbox app. And then now if you turn on this option, it will make it easier to switch between the desktop environment and the Xbox experience. Once you do that, you can close the settings app and then just restart the computer. Now, after the computer starts, just log in and then the Xbox full screen experience will launch automatically. Now, one thing to point out is that you will have to be enrolled in the Xbox Insider program in order to access this feature. Also, Microsoft notes that it's rolling out the experience gradually, so it's not available to everyone just yet. Now, you can still switch to the desktop, and if you're using a keyboard and mouse, you can use the Windows Tab keyboard shortcut, and then it will bring this interface. And from here, you can just click on the Windows Desktop option. Just confirm that you're switching to the desktop, and that's it. Now, if you have the Task View button on the desktop, from here, you can switch directly to the Xbox Full Experience mode. Now, one thing to note is that Whenever you enable this feature, it is best to restart the computer for the best experience. And that applies to when switching to the Xbox experience or when switching to the desktop. If at any time you want to disable the feature and then from the gaming section, go to the full experience page and then just turn off these two features. Now, if we go to the settings app, more specifically to the recovery section, we're going to find a new point in time restore page. And basically it's a new recovery feature that allows the system to capture a snapshot of the entire computer and regular intervals and stores them locally. Now, if something happens to your computer, such as a broken driver, a buggy update, misconfiguration, malware, and even if you make a mistake making a configuration, you can revert the computer to the exact state it was in at the selected restore point. Each restore point includes the entire operating system state, including install applications, system configuration, local files, passwords, keys, and credentials. Now, the point in time restore feature comes enabled by default on Windows 11 Home and Pro. And from this page, you can manage the entire feature. For example, here you can turn it on and off. You can select the restore point frequency and the retention. And you can even control the restore point storage usage. So right now I don't have a restore point, but if we go to the recovery settings and then if we open the Windows recovery environment, actually I can access the Windows recovery environment because I'm actually using remote desktop to my Copala Plus PC. However, let me just cancel this. When you are inside of the Windows recovery environment, from the troubleshoot page, you will find the point in time restore option. And from there, you will need to provide the BitLocker key. And from there, you can select the actual restore point to restore your computer. And that's it. That is a really quick overview of the point in time restore feature that Microsoft is currently testing with Windows Insiders. Now, if we go to File Explorer, we're going to notice that the company is updating the context menu to make it a little bit less cluttered. 
And what the company is doing right now is trying to find related options and group them in a submenu. For example, manage files as new. And from here, you can access the options for compression, copy path, rotate, and set as a background if you're actually selecting an image. That is one example. Now, if we go to the OneDrive folder and if we right click a file, we're going to find the OneDrive submenu that will include all the OneDrive related options, including the always keep on this device and free up space. And finally, Microsoft is updating the voice typing feature on Windows 11 to bring fluid dictation to this experience. Fluid dictation is not new to Windows 11 because it has been available for some time on voice access, but now the company is implementing the feature into voice typing. And this feature actually makes dictation smoother and smarter by automatically correcting grammar, punctuation, and filtered words as you speak, reducing the need for manual editing using an MPU on your Copal Plus PC. And that's it. Those were pretty much all the biggest changes that you're going to find on Windows 11, build 26.220.7271 in the dev and beta channels. Just remember that the company is also introducing some smaller changes for click to do and it is also expanding the resume feature to more applications. And there are also some fixes, as you can see right here, and some known issues that you need to know before installing this particular build. And that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think about these changes. Like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.